Hello beautiful people and welcome to a guide on by far the most underrated character in all of Genshin Impact, Kea. In this video we're going to be talking about the build paths for DPS and support, his viability, both with numbers to back them up, and a section on how best to utilize him in Spiral Abyss. First of all, let's talk about whether you should be using Kea as a DPS or as a support. Kea's biggest weakness as a DPS is how reliant he is on certain supports. If you try to use him without Chongyun, you're gonna have a pretty bad time. This is due to the fact that Kea's damage is split between Cryo and Physical, making it hard to get a good cup or just a good comp because you generally want to have a way to reduce enemy resistances, but there's no unit that reduces both Physical and Cryo resistance. Because of that, Chongyun is basically a godsend for Kea. He's going to convert the only physical part of his damage to cryo, making him completely focused on cryo damage. Basically, you should not be running Kea DPS if you don't have Chongyun. If you do have Chongyun, it's definitely an option you should consider. On the other hand, Kea as a support works in basically any comp. He's the best cryo unit to use if you're running a physical DPS and need superconduct, and he's also generally the best cryo unit for your melt comps. He also happens to be really effective when paired with Jingcho, because he basically perma-freezes enemies, making you not have to dodge and therefore have more time to do your damage. Most people really underestimate how much damage Kea does with his burst, but it's about 1500% of his attack at talent level 6. That's even more damage than Ningguang's burst, and on top of that, it's AoE unlike Ling Ningguang who is completely single target. But that's enough about support Kea. Now let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is going to be DPS Kea. If we only look at their charge attack spam, which is for both of them the optimal DPS combo, you can see that Keqing's DPS is much higher than Kea. However, once you factor in their skills and burst on top of their cast times, you'll actually find that Kea actually manages to out-damage Kishin. Don't worry, I'm not trying to argue that Kea is better than Kishin. I'm just trying to say that he is good enough that he is better than her in certain situations. He does have some pretty significant weaknesses, which we will be talking about later on. At the moment, his biggest weakness is definitely the fact that he cannot do shit in Abyss 12. However, new Abyss floors have been announced, and we can expect floor 12 to not be a cryo floor anymore. While in the current abyss he's basically useless on floor 12, he is insanely strong on floors 9, 10, and 11. Since the main DPS that I usually use is Pyro, I actually had a lot of trouble with abyss 10 and getting 9 stars on it. However, the first time I used Kea, I just got the 9 stars first try. Well, technically it took me like an hour, but that's just because I had the wrong weapon on and it was only level 50, so we don't talk about that. Now, I've already talked about the numbers, but let's talk about the other reasons why he's so good as a DPS. Since you want to be using him in freeze comps, you basically won't ever have to dodge ever again for the rest of your life. On top of that, he doesn't even need to be on the field to deal a bunch of his damage, so you can actually pretty safely switch out of him to use your skills and bursts on your supports. Now before we get into the builds, we're just gonna take a quick look at his talents and constellations so we can know what we're working with. His normal attack is a 5 hit combo, where the 5th hit teleports you behind the target. It can be useful to dodge, but you generally won't want to use your full combo since it will be more damage to jump out of your fourth hit and start your combo over again. His optimal mouse one combo, however, is simply just charge attack spam, where you just charge attack over and over again if you have the stamina for it. His elemental skill is simply a cone of cryo damage in front of him. By itself, it generates two to three, at random, elemental particles. If you catch those particles with Kea, that'll correspond to about 6 to 9 energy. It has a cooldown of 6 seconds. His elemental burst is going to release 3 icicles that will spin around you, dealing damage on average about 14 times. It costs 60 energy and has a cooldown of 15 seconds. Kea's Ascension 1 passive is mostly irrelevant, it just restores him a small amount of health when he uses his elemental skill. His Ascension 4 passive, on the other hand, is completely insane. 
it makes his elemental skill produce up to two additional elemental particles when used, which corresponds to six extra energy on every cast. However, there is currently a bug making it really inconsistent. The description says that it will generate extra elemental particles when freezing targets, but it's just really inconsistent. I'm really hoping they fix this bug soon. His passive talent reduces sprinting stamina by 20%. Now, you might be thinking that's pretty irrelevant, but in reality, since he uses a charge attack spam as his primary means of DPS, having that stamina reduction on the sprinting makes him able to use his charge attack quite a bit more, which is obviously very, very useful. All right, now let's take a look at the constellations. KS Constellation 1 is very simple, but it also is pretty strong. It simply increases the crit rate of his normal and charge attacks by 15%. His Constellation 2 is by far his strongest constellation. Upon reading it for the first time, you might not realize this, but it does not need to land the killing blow on enemies to extend the duration. This means that as long as you're killing about two enemies every 10 seconds, you'll have his ult basically permanently up. His Constellations 3 and 5 are the same as every other unit. They increase his talents levels by 3. Now, since Kea's skill isn't that strong, his Constellation 3 also isn't the greatest, but his Constellation 5 is actually very, very good. His Constellation 4 doesn't add any damage, it just adds a bit of survivability, which is always nice, but never needed. And finally, his Constellation 6 is also really, really strong. It basically makes the effective cost of his burst only 45 instead of 60, and gives it one more icicle, therefore increasing its DPS. Now, constellations matter a little bit more on Kea right now than they usually would because he is currently available in the Star Glitter Shop. What I would generally recommend if you are looking to play Kea as a main DPS is if you have him at constellation 1, you should buy him from the shop, and if you have him at constellation 5, you also should buy him from the shop. If you are at any other constellations, it's not really worth it, since his only amazing constellations are his constellations 2 and 6. Now it is finally time to get into the builds. Now I wanted to be 100% sure of everything I was going to say in this section. For that reason, I actually made a spreadsheet with pretty much every single weapon you might want to run on Kea to actually compare the actual damage numbers between every single weapon. I'll be including the table with the results in the description. After looking at the numbers, I can safely say that the best options are Aquila, Favonia, and Blacklift Longsword, about tied for first place. If you don't have them, I would, could also recommend the Skyward Blade, because the energy retort is actually useful on Kea. In the spreadsheet, it's a little bit lower than it should be, because I didn't factor in the energy recharge, but factoring it in, it would definitely become the third best option. Next up, if you don't have any high refined weapons, you can go for either Flute or Lion's Roar. I would personally recommend Flute over Lion's Roar. However, if you have a refined 4 or 5 prototype Rancor, it's actually going to outshine the Flute and the Lion's Roar. Finally, I'm not including the Black Sword because the numbers show that when it's refined 5, it's actually going to outshine the other weapons. However, it's currently impossible to get it higher than refined 2, so I'm not including it. If you're using Kea as a support rather than a DPS, just get any weapon that has energy recharge as its substat. Sacrificial Sword would be the best, next would be Favonia Sword, and finally Festering Desire. Now that we've talked about the weapons, let's get into the artifacts. So the artifact set you'll want to be running is definitely going to be the Icebreaker. It gives you 15% cryo damage and also increases your crit rate by enemies who are affected by cryo by 20% and enemies who are frozen by an additional 20%. Since you already get 15% crit rate against cryo affected enemies or frozen enemies from the cryo resonance, that's a total of 55% bonus crit chance against any frozen enemies. If on top of that you have KS Constellation 1, he basically gets a 70% increase in his crit rate on his normal attacks. Since the starting rate is 5%, that gives a total of 75% crit rate without any main or substats. 
Unfortunately, Kea doesn't really have any great early game alternatives. Your best bet will probably be a 4-piece Sojourner, but you can also make do with any plus 18% attack 2-piece on top of either another plus 18% attack 2-piece or the Berserker 2-piece. Now when it comes to artifact main stats, uh, we obviously are going to want attack percent on the timepiece, cryo damage bonus on the goblet, and we're definitely going to want crit damage on the circlet. The reason we want crit damage on the circlet and not crit rate is because we already get so much crit rate out of the artifact set bonus, the cryo resonance, and possibly Kaya's constellation 1. Now when it comes to substats, crit damage is by far the most important one. Then you can go for either energy recharge or attack percent. They are about tied. After that is going to be crit rate and then finally flat attack. Since the purpose of this comp is to keep enemies frozen and not to shatter them, Kea basically doesn't benefit from elemental mastery. Now here are the stats of my Kea. Obviously you'll want to have a relatively low crit rate because you'll get so much out of your artifact that doesn't actually show in your attribute page. Uh, you'll obviously want a lot of attack. The elemental mastery that I have is a complete waste of resources but I got unlucky, there's not much I can do about it. And the cryo damage bonus. You can see that I have physical damage bonus but that's not from artifacts, that's simply because I have Aquila. Alright, now it's time to talk about Kaya's biggest weakness as a DPS. He unfortunately does not have many comps in which he can work. To enable him, you absolutely need Chongyun himself and a Hydro unit. On top of that, you're going to need a healer. Generally, you'll also want a Viridescent support. That makes five things that we need. Obviously we can combine two of these by having either a hydro healer or an animal healer, but it's still a bit of a pain in the ass. For that reason, there's only really three comps in which he can work. There's the Barbara comp, the Jean comp, and the Bennett comp. Now you'll notice that Bennett is neither a hydro or a animal unit, so if you run Bennett, you actually won't be able to have a Viridescent support. However, sometimes you're going to need to break cryo shields and having the option to sub in a different healer can be very useful. If you're using the Bennett comp, your comp will consist of Kea, Chongyun Bennett, and a hydro unit. The best hydro unit here is definitely Jing Cho, but you can also make do with Mona. If you're using the Barbara comp, your comp will be Kea, Chongyun, Barbara, and then a Viridescent support. It can be either Animo MC, Sucrose, or Venti. Venti obviously being the best, and Sucrose being the second best. I actually used this comp on stream to beat Abyss Floors 9 to 11 with 9 stars, using only 4 star units. If you want to check it out, I'm going to include an unlisted video in the description, and you can just click the link to see that in action. Finally, if you're running the Jean comp, your comp is going to be Kea, Chongyun, Jean, and then a Hydro unit, either Jingcho or Mona, Jingcho being by far the better choice. This, in my opinion, is the strongest of the three comps, and the one that I'd recommend if you have Jean and Jingcho. Alright, here's a few gameplay tips that might actually help you out. So, first of all, Chongyun's burst isn't really important in this comp, so you'll generally want to catch the particles that your Chongyun generates with his skill with Kea. The best way to effectively do this is to use your skill on Chongyun, then swap to Kea and instantly use your burst. You'll also generally want to be using your Hydro skill before you switch into your Kea, that way you can keep enemies frozen as soon as you start using your cryo abilities. One thing that you should be careful about is the way Swirl interact with Frozen. Applying cryo or hydro to a frozen enemy will not remove the frozen status. However, if hydro is the last element that you applied to the frozen enemy, and then you use an animal ability, it's actually going to swirl hydro and not cryo, and therefore reduce the hydro resistance, which is not what you want to be doing. Because of that interaction, you want to make sure that you have used a cryo ability right before you use your animal abilities. I'm going to use the last section of this video to make a little bit of an abyss guide on using Kea. I know that not a lot of people do this in their guides, but I think it's pretty useful to have. Let's start by talking about Floor 9. Floor 9 first half basically lets you run either of the three comps, so you can just go with whichever one you want. Floor 9 second half, on the other hand, 
has a cryo gunner, which means that you need to have a pyro unit in your comp. That means that I would definitely recommend the Bennett comp, but if you don't have Bennett, which you should, he's on the radar banner right now and one of the best units in the game, so get him while you can. But if you don't have Bennett, you can go for the Barbara comp and just put in a pyro support instead of a viridescent support. Abyss Floor 10 is insanely easy for Kea because a lot of the enemies are pyro, which means you'll be able to melt on them a lot. And there are really no actual shields you need to be worried about since the only elemental shields that are going to be there are going to be pyro shields and you already should have a hydro unit in your comp so you're all set against that. For that reason, on floor 10 you can run Kea in either the first half or the second half. Floor 11 is a little bit more complicated since both sides have a cryo shield you need to break. That makes the Bennett comp the strongest option, but you again, you can still go for the Barbara comp while putting a Pyro support instead of a Viridescent support. You could also simply ditch the Hydro unit altogether for this floor if you are having trouble with it, because the additional Cryo damage you get from the floor is enough to make up for the reduced damage you'll get from not being able to freeze enemies. This next section is going to be for Cycle Pass only. So for Floor 12 with Kea, you basically can't run him in the first half because there are way too many Cryo Slimes. You can make him work on the second half, but I generally definitely would not recommend it. If you do decide to do that, you're going to need a Pyro Sub DPS, so you can either go for the Bennett comp and build him as a Sub DPS instead of a healer, or you can go for the Barbara comp and simply include a Pyro sub DPS unit. That about does it for this guide. I really hope you learned something. You may have noticed that I took a few clips from my Twitch stream on uh, twitch.tv slash thejeff77. Feel free to come check me out, drop a follow. I will be glad to answer any questions you have either regarding this, regarding the last video, or regarding literally anything else. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment telling me how your day was, and I will see you in the next video. Farewell, beautiful people.